stage pipeline. So, this is another advanced version over that uh, 6 stage pipeline. So, this is available in the ARM 11 core. So, there are two new features have been introduced. First one is the shift operation. So, shift operation it has been separated into a separate pipeline stage. So, you remember that in the ARM architecture we have shown that uh, before the ALU there is a barrel shifter. So, we can always do the shift operation in a separate pipeline stage. Okay. So, that way so that has been exploited in ARM 11 architecture. So, it is a it is a 8 stage pipeline. So, the shift operation is constituting one stage. So, if you have got uh, instruction like this. So, where we are uh, if we have got instruction like say x equal to uh, x plus y left shifted by 2. So, while doing this operation this y left shifted by 2. So, this is uh, done by a separate pipeline stage and this addition is done by a separate pipeline stage. Previously, so this was uh, these two were done together. So, that way it was taking more time. Now, it is uh, separate divided into two pipeline stages. So, the operation will be faster. Okay. So, that way it helps in the uh, that way it helps in the pipelining uh, this uh, reducing the speed of uh, reducing the uh, delay of operation. And both instruction and data access are distributed into two pipeline stages. So, the fetch part so that is also divided into two stages. So, we had the six stage so pipeline from there we have got a new stage of shift. So, that makes a seven then uh, this uh, instruction and data they are divide, divided into uh, um, uh, uh, two pipeline stages. So, that is uh, 7 plus 2 9 uh, pipeline stage and this execution uh, unit is split into three pipelines and they can that can operate concurrently and commit instructions out of order also. So, what do we mean by that? Let us try to understand. So, suppose we have uh, suppose we have a situation like this that we have got an instruction like say R 1 equal to R 1 plus R 2 and another instruction R 3 equal to R 4 multiplied by R 5. Now, if you look into these two instructions, then this instruction it does not uh, affect the execution of this. So, they, these instructions are independent of each other. So, in that way if you write a program in some high level language, suppose this is the uh, this is the uh, program that you have written, then you can find out uh, into th in this uh, program several uh, parts of the program they are that are not dependent on each other or if you are this is particularly true when you have got a loop body like say I am writing a loop for i equal to 1 to 100 some statements are there. So, if you analyze this loop body you may find that many of these instructions they are not dependent on each other and they can be done parallelly. So, if you have got multiple execution units available then you can uh, f uh, that is you have got multiple ALUs uh, available then you can do all these operations parallelly. Though for a norm uh, human being it is difficult to uh, find out wh where can we find this type of uh, parallelism, but this is done by the compilers. So, they will find out like wh what are the points, what are the instructions that can be executed parallelly. So, they are actually the distributed into a number of functional modules and they are done parallelly. So, this way we can have this uh, we, we can have this execution divided into three pipeline stages and then we can have this thing uh, the, the instructions can commit out of order also means it is not mandatory that uh, the, the in the program the instructions um, one comes before instruction two, but the uh, in the actual execution instruction two may be completed before instruction one. So, if there is no dependency between the two instructions, so it does not uh, make any difference. So, they can be completed out of order also. So, next we will see next we will see uh, the 8 stage uh, pipeline uh, that is the 8 stage, uh, 8 stage pipeline we have seen so that completes the pipeline discussion. Next we will look into the instruction set architecture for the risk processor. So, instruction set architecture means the instructions the, that are available in that uh, for that processor and also the, uh, the registers that are available. So, like that. So, as we have already seen that this uh, ARM is a uh, risk architecture, it is a typical risk architecture with several enhancements to improve the performance further. 
So, what are the risk features it has? So, as we have noted earlier that the instructions are similar in, in terms of size and execution time and also this risk processors they have got large number of registers in them. So, if you look into this ARM processor then here also we have got large uniform register file. So, this particular term uh, file register file is this register file. So, if you will there, so you know that the term file is uh, the term file means it is a collection of records, it is a collection of records. So, if you look into any data structure um, book, so it is collection of records, but uh, in case of uh, in case of processors, so we the same thing happens like each register can be considered to be a record and we have got a collection of such registers. So, they are often called register file. Okay. So, this is a standard terminology in computer architecture. So, this register file it has got 16 general purpose registers, there are 16 such registers. So, that that is quite big. So, each register is 32 bit and all that. Mm, then it for it is something called a load store architecture. Okay. So, load store architecture means the instructions that process data operate only on registers that separate from instructions that access memory. So, we will explain this like say architecture what we have seen so far like say 8085, 8051 etcetera. So, they are called accumulator based architecture, they are called accumulator based architecture. So, why? Because if you do any operation one of the operand is the uh, one of the operand is always uh, that, that special register accumulator and the destination is also that special register accumulator. So, you, you always have instructions like say add a comma b okay, or you can have uh, say add a comma h. So, like that. So, but this uh, one this uh, first one of the operands is always the a register the accumulator in 8051 also we have seen that they are uh, accumulator. So, and whenever you are accessing uh, the memory, so you see that uh, there it is uh, we can mention the address and then it can do the operation and also we also have got this is this type of instructions like add a comma m and we said that the for 8085 the uh, meaning of this instruction was a will get a plus memory location pointed to by the HL pair. So, this was the meaning. Okay. So, you see that you can also add this accumulator with some memory location. In contrast, so this load store architecture that we have, so this load store architecture tells that we cannot have this uh, arithmetic instructions to uh, use this uh, uh, to use this memory. Like you cannot have this type of add say R 1 comma m. So, this type of instructions are not possible. For accessing memory we have got specific instructions load and store. So, load and store. So, these are uh, two instructions that are available. By load instruction you can load some register with the content of some memory location and store you can store the content of a register onto a memory location. So, but you cannot use this memory operand in the arithmetic and logic instruction. So, that is not possible. So, this type of architecture, so they are called load store architectures. So, the, uh, the so what happens is that if I am following a load store architecture, then whenever I am doing an operation say addition operation, then the operands must be some registers. So, maybe R 1, R 2, R 3 which may mean that R 1 gets the content of R 2 plus R 3. So, this may be the meaning, but so before that I have to somehow uh, load this R 2 and R 3 by proper values it may be coming from uh, memory and that way you have to use load instruction for that or the, the immediate operands are also possible. So, uh, so, immediate part is not shown here, but immediates are also possible. So, this way we can have this uh, um, architecture uh, classified as load store architecture. So, this ARM processor they uh, they are following this load store architecture. So, instructions that process data operate only on registers and are separate from instructions that 
access memory. Then addressing modes are simple. Okay. So, there are various addressing modes uh, that are available in different processors like register in indirect. So, we have in 8051 and uh, 8085 we have seen that register indirect mode, but uh, if you look into later versions of processors like uh, I86 onwards, then you will find that there are complex modes like based addressing, then indexed addressing, then uh, indexed addressing with post increment, pre decrement like that there are many such variants of the addressing modes. And again the same thing like when the architecture designers they thought about the features of the processor they thought that all these things will be helpful, but when it comes to the compilation of programs only a limited number of addressing modes are actually used by the uh, designers by the uh, by the compiler designers. So, as a result there is no point supporting those uh, complex instruction modes and uh, addressing modes. Uh, so, in risk architecture so they are made simple. So, it is simple addressing mode uniform and fixed length instruction field. So, all the instructions they are more or less fixed, uh, their lengths are fixed and their structure is also fixed. All ARM instructions are 32 bit long and most of them have a regular 3 operand encoding. So, all instructions are 32 bit and uh, all instructions are 3 operand instructions. So, this is another point to note. So, we can uh, we can have instructions like say add R1, R2, R3. So, they are I have to have the to operand 1, operand 2 and destination. So, th they three operands are there. On the other hand in 8085 or 8051, so we have got the instructions like add a comma b. So, that is there this a is so this first one is the source as well as the destination and the second one is the second operand. So, it is this type of instructions so they are called two operand instruction, they are called two operand instruction. Now, this one this type of instruction they will be called 3 operand instructions and you can also have 0 operand instruction like say NOP, NOP instruction is 0 operand, no operand is there. So, you can have uh, 1 operand instruction like say push. So, if you look into the push instruction push PSW, so this is a single operand. So, you have got single operand instruction that way uh, we have got different uh, number of operands, but in ARM processor. So, most of the instructions they are they are 3 operand in nature. So, it will have the 3 operand encoding. So, next we will look into some improved features. So, those are the basic features that are there, but there are many improved features also for ARM. Like each instruction controls the ALU and shifter and making the instructions more powerful. So, each instruction means normally the arithmetic logic instructions, so they will be utilizing this uh, ALU and shifter uh, modules, but in case of uh, ARM processor we will find that this every instruction will be able to use this ALU and shifter, that way instructions can become uh, a bit complex. So, this is a diversion from RISC architecture where these instructions where the instructions are supposed to be simple but now we are going towards a bit complex instruction. So, this ARM processor is a mix of this RISC and CISC architectural features, so we will see that. Then auto increment and auto de decrement addressing modes are supported. So, auto increment addressing mode means that uh, you have got, uh, so I, I can have say add uh, um, R1 comma R2 comma R3. And then we can say that uh, this R1 plus plus sort of thing. So, that will mean that this R1 value will be added. So, R3 will become say R1 plus R2. After that, R1 will be incremented as well. So, this is this is another job that is done. So, this is very much useful, particularly whenever you are writing code to access an array. So, array is uh, normally stored in a memory like this. So, there is the, the initial address is there, suppose the array is stored in this region of memory. So, initially you set your index here, the first location, then after this one has been accessed, so you want that the index should automatically increase. So, if you if that is automatically done, then uh, uh, we do not have to spend another instruction for incrementing this index part. Okay. That that is why this uh, auto increment is a very useful uh, mode for this processor designers. So, uh, this uh, a, though it is not a risk feature because now we are uh, making the addressing mode complex. Okay. So, it is not a risk feature, 
but uh, this uh, arm processors it, it will have these uh, auto increment feature similarly auto decrement feature is also there with the arm processor another diversion is multiple load store instructions that allow load store up to 16 registers at once so multiple load store uh, is the feature is like this so this is basically a cisc feature so this multiple load store is a cisc feature so in if you look into intel 8086 family of architecture then you will find that there is a special instruction which is called moves okay moves b moves w moves word like that basically the moves so what it does is that if you have got a uh, say suppose this is my memory and there i have got some chunk of data in some source so this is the source in the source location a source chunk and from there i want to move that chunk to this i want to copy it to the destination okay fine so what you can do you can set the source index register to point to this one and the destination index register to point to the destination there are special registers si and di for source index and destination index and you can have in another register cx how many bytes you want to transfer and then after setting this si register like move si comma that source address move di comma destination address and move cx comma count cx comma count so you can just say moves b for doing this movement okay now this is a very useful instruction you see that uh, uh, so this is uh, in this case what has happened is that i uh, these boxes the, or the blocks they are not overlapping so i can copy uh, from the first location and continue uh, till the cx number of bytes have been copied but consider the situation where in the memory my source block is uh, say somewhere here so this is my source block and my destination is destination is like this my destination block is something like this so the dotted part is the destination now you see that while doing the copy i should not uh, copy from the beginning because if i copy from the beginning then this content will be lost so i should copy from the last location onward so i should do it like this i should do it like this or if the overlapping is in the other way so this is the source and this is your destination this is the destination then i should do the other way so i should start copying from the beginning and do it this in this fashion so all these are taken care of by the processor and how many cycles will it take for execution that depends on the count value so that is the block size how many bytes are there in that block so it will be dependent on that so this is a pure cisc feature because the whole operation is very complex but at the same time this is a very useful feature because many a time in the program so we would like to move the content of one memory chunk to another okay that way we'll be very often uh, requiring this uh, type of operation so this has been uh, 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 looked uh, taken into consideration by this uh, arm designers and they have brought back this multiple load store instruction but no uh, not in the same form as we have in uh, this uh, as we are having in say uh, a, a intel family of processors but it is in a different way but you can uh, we can have this multiple load store then the next important thing that we have is the conditional execution of instructions so instructions will be executed conditionally so there is a 4 bit condition code before every instruction and if that condition code is satisfied then only the instruction will be executed otherwise the instruction will not be executed and this has the advantage of eliminating small branches and thus pipeline stalls so let us see how this thing happens so uh, suppose we are uh, having one if then else statement like this in some high level language so if r1 is greater than r2 then r3 gets r4 plus r5 else 
R3 gets R4 minus R5. Suppose in some high level language we have got this type of code. Now if you consider the architectures that we are familiar with so far 8085 or 8051, so the, con the conversion will be the machine code translation will be something like this compare R1, R2 then jump on less or equal to L1 and then it will be uh, here I will be doing that addition operation add R, R3, R4, R5 meaning that R3 gets the sum of R4 and R5 then there should be a jump there should be there should be a jump to this uh, jump for this uh, um, to skip over the next instruction it should be a jump to L2 and then here I should have this level L1 and there I should do the operation subtract subtract R3 R4 R5 and this is my level L2 this is the code. Now you think about executing this code in a pipeline fashion. So even if I have got a fetch decode execute uh, pipeline, fetch decode execute pipeline in which I am executing it. So when uh, this instruction is executed, so when this uh, instruction is being executed, so the, pre the next instruction will be fetched. But you, you see that until and unless this instruction's execution is over, I do not know whether the next instruction is this one or the next instruction is this one. So I really cannot fetch. Okay? So the, the pipeline has to wait till the execution of this JLE L1 instruction is over and then only I will know what is the destination and then only the uh, fetch operation can continue. So there is a pipeline stall. For condition unconditional jump like here there is no problem because we know that uh, if it is uh, after this it gets this jump L2 instruction. So after this one has been executed so jump L2 so it, it should fetch from this address but anyway um, uh, still you need to have that intelligence that decode stage uh, uh, when this instruction is uh, this instruction actually when uh, say this instruction is in the execute phase then this jump L2 instruction is in the decode phase. So at that point I do not know what is the next instruction to fetch. So the next instruction should be in the fetch state. So if I number this instruction 1, 2 and 3 then when this instruction 1 is in execute stage the instruction 2 is in the decode stage and instruction 3 should be in the fetch stage. But uh, at, at this point at this point I do not know what is the next instruction. So if this uh, uh, because th uh, this instructions meaning will be clear only when we come to the execute phase. Okay? So until and unless this uh, instruction 2 comes to the execute phase I, I do not know what is the uh, next instruction. So that way there is a problem. So whenever we have got branch instruction so it creates uh, difficulty because we have got uh, this uh, the pipeline has to be stalled in between. Now what this um, uh, ARM people have done is that they do it like this. So we have got this compare instruction. So compare R1, R2. So that is there. Then after that, it will be it will be putting these instructions like this. So it is called GT add GT add R3, R4, R5. And we also have after that we put L E sub R3, R4, R5. Fine. So, what is happening is that so first it will be compared, then the next instruction when it goes to execute phase, so it will check whether the greater than flag is set or not. So, if the greater than flag is set, then only this addition will be done. Otherwise, it is same as the no, okay, no operation. Then the next instruction will come into execution and depending upon the condition if the less or equal condition is true then only this uh, sub will this subtraction will take place. So you see now you do not have to stall the pipeline. So you can uh, continue executing the instructions. 
knowing that this uh, prefix part that we have this conditional code that we are putting before the instruction so that will take care of uh, this type of uh, problems ok so this pipeline stalls will be much less in case of uh, this uh, uh, conditional execution uh, avail with the availability of conditional execution this pipeline stalls will be less so that is the thing the uh, last uh, point that we have here in this slide is that it is uh, the arithmetic operations may or may not affect the status bits so normally we have seen that in other processors this arithmetic operation they affect the status bits uh, so that, that that carry overflows that psw bits are affected but here uh, we have got two variants of every instruction like add instruction it has got two variant as we will see later one is add which will be affecting the status flags as well then there is another variant add s so this add instruction will not affect the status flag but add s instruction so it will affect the status flag and this is uh, useful because as soon as we have got conditional uh, branching so there may be difficulty because uh, you can say so uh, conditional branching so with, with that we just uh, just if you look in the previous instruction uh, compare r1 comma r2 then uh, gt add r3 r4 r5 now if this instruction is allowed to affect the status flag then when i am writing like le sub okay r3 r4 r5 so what I want is this uh, flag that I uh, want to check. So, this should be the effect of this comparison and not this addition. Okay. So, in uh, other processors you, you know that whenever some arithmetic, oper arithmetic logic operation is done the status flags will be set. So, as a result this GTA add instruction so it will be uh, setting this uh, status flags as well, but we do not want that we do not want the status flag to be set by the GT add instruction. So, this is uh, ensured by uh, by, by putting two variant of this add instruction. So, we have got we will see one is add another is add s. So, if you say add s then the status flags will be affected. If you do not say add s then the status flags will not be affected. So, we have got two variants add and add s. So, this way we can have uh, different features of uh, um, uh, so many improved features that have been incorporated into the ARM processor.